Hi, this is Greg from Structure Toolkit. Sometimes when designing timber, you may need to notch your beam in order for it to fit within the rest of your framing. Examples include where a roof beam is too deep to be supported at the top of a wall in a pitched roof, or where a floor barrier or joist needs to be notched underneath in order to be supported on an adjacent concrete rail slab. By notching the beam, a weak point is created at the notch and so it will need to be designed for. In Structural Toolkit, you can design a timber notch by using the Timber Member Design Module. Our example for this video will be a roof beam that will sit flat at ceiling level in a pitched roof, where one end support is an external wall. At the external wall, there will be a box cutter instead of an eave. The notch will be flat under the box cutter and then taper up to its full depth matching the pitch of the roof. We've already designed our roof beam, which we will be using our forces from to design our notch. A notch section's capacity can be calculated by using the equation from Appendix E9 in AS 1720.1. Effectively, this equation is checking the notch interface's resistance to fracture or tearing due to an applied shear and moment. The fraction mechanism is only applicable where the shear force is upwards and moment positive for a notch on the bottom, or where the shear force is downwards and the moment is negative for a notch on the top of the member. If either of the forces do not fall into these sign conventions, then for the design check, the magnitude of that force is taken as zero. As outlined in the code, the adverse effects of notching may be minimized by increasing the opening angle of the notch, aka rather than having a vertical face at the interface, it is tapered away. So with that in mind, as our beam is going to be notched on the top, we are only going to be interested in downward shear and negative moment, which will be our load combination with wind ultimate forces. Our roof beam happens to be an area of Australia with substantially more wind loads, and so we have some significant upwards forces on our roof beam. So to start our design, we'll open up a timber member design. In the design tab, we'll want to enter in our geometry as some of these inputs do affect the notch tab. Looking back at our roof beam design, we can see we have a span of four meters and restraints at 900 centers. So we'll put that into our timber notch module. As we are designing using the wind case, we'll set our live load duration to wind. Our default timber section is already a 240 by 45 F17, so we can leave it as it is, which if we have a look, was the member size we used in our roof beam design. With those inputs done, we can now move on to our notch tab down the bottom. Here we'll need to put in some geometry. Our notch will be on the top, so we'll leave that input as is. F17 KD Hardwood has a strength group of four, so we'll pick that. Our notch length from the end will be until our notch starts to taper, being 200 millimeters. Our beam needs to notch down 120 millimeters, so it will be a 120 mil deep notch. To demonstrate the effect of tapering, we'll leave our length of notch taper zero for the moment. So as our notch interface isn't directly at the support, we'll need to determine our shear and moment manually at 200 millimeters along the beam. Alternatively, we could have done this design as a linked analysis where you can automatically transfer forces at different locations using this input here. With the linked analysis set up, you would then select a point you want to design at, either being at the support at the start of the taper or at the end. You also get an option to choose between from the left or the right support. Care will need to be taken here if you have a significantly long notch or unusual loading conditions, as you will need to be sure that you've accounted for the maximum design forces along the span for your notch depth. In our case, we will be entering our forces in manually. Looking at our roof beam again, we have an upwards ultimate reaction of 3.08 kilonewtons, and if we look down below, an upwards UDL ultimate of 1.1 kilonewtons per meter. Using these two values, we'll be able to work out our moment and shear at 200 millimeters along. So if we go back to the timber notch design, we'll first start with our shear, which will be negative 3.08 for our reaction, plus 1.1 times 0.2 for our UDL component, which gives us negative 2.86 kilonewtons. 
Our moment will then be these forces resolved based on their lever arm to 200 millimeters along the beam. So in our moment input, we'll go equals negative 3.08 for our reaction multiplied by its lever arm of 0.2, then plus our UDL component, multiplied by its lever arm, which will be 0.2 divided by 2, giving us a negative moment of 0.59. Below we then have calculations for both the standard shear and bending capacities of the notch section, and then below the formula for notch capacity from Appendix E9. Something important to note with this equation is that it will consider the stability factor K12 when the notch is within the middle third of the span, making it quite important to enter the correct location of the notch above and also the span in the design tab. We can see in our case our notch fails. So clearly we will need to consider our taper, which based on the detail we have will be 300 millimeters long. Putting this 300 millimeters in, we can get our notch to work. That about covers designing a timber notch. Feel free to check out our website for other tips and videos. Thanks for watching.